Learn to enjoy more with less. There's an old Zen Buddhist saying, less is more. Now, for the longest time, a lot of people were ridiculing this statement. The underlying assumption being that it's impossible. Other groups of people will keep repeating this mantra over and over until it really doesn't mean much of anything. This really is too bad because there's a lot of truth to this. Less is more. How come? Well, like I mentioned in the story I shared earlier, when I was in college, I didn't have much stuff. I did not have enough money left over for much food, much less possessions. But guess what? The stuff that I did own, I truly enjoyed. I remember buying this nightstand from a Goodwill store in downtown San Francisco. I hung on to that nightstand for close to a decade after graduating college. It meant that much to me. I really became attached to it, not only because of its functionality, but also because of the fact that it reminded me that I don't really need all that much stuff when I move from apartment to apartment and from my apartment to my first house. That nightstand was a tangible reminder to me that it was really my attitude that made me feel content. It's my mindset that made me feel that things were worthwhile and complete. I shared this with you because it's easy to think that for you to feel secure, you have to surround yourself with a lot of stuff. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that for you to feel confident, the stuff you own has to have the right labels, logos, or has to be made by the right manufacturers. The reality is these things only have meaning because you choose for them to have meaning. The meaning comes from you. Like I said, I had a nightstand that was all scuffed up and didn't really look all that good, but in my mind it was quite precious. I thought it was very elegant. It made for a nice little centerpiece. You have to adapt the same mindset with the things that you own. Because if you read that much meaning into the things that you buy, you end up buying less. Your mind can only hang on to so many points of reference as far as meaning is concerned. You will be able to enjoy your possessions because, ultimately, they remind you of what's really truly worthwhile in your life. You're no longer engaged in this fruitless race of just acquiring more and more stuff because you're looking for more and more meaning. Instead, when you choose to become conscious of how each and every existing possession you already have gives you meaning, you feel more content. There's a less of a hole in your life that you need to fill with people, possessions, ideas, or activities. Strip down to the things you enjoy. The next step you should take involves doing a complete assessment of all the things in your life. This includes people, activities, and actual things. Methodically think about the different people in your life. What do you enjoy about them? What do they bring to the table? How do they engage your sense of meaning and purpose? Do the same with the activities you engage in. Apply the same analysis to the things you own. When you do this, you probably would come up with many different reasons. But the more you do this, certain patterns start to emerge. You start connecting the dots, and it turns out that people, activities, and things in your life all share certain common themes. When you're able to do this, you start looking at these things in your life for what they are. You appreciate them. They're no longer proxies for that ultimate sensation that you're looking for. They're no longer stuff that you have to acquire so you can feel good about yourself. Instead, you strip everything down to emotional states that are real. You start seeing these themes work together. Accordingly, you're less likely to keep acquiring stuff because at this point, it doesn't make any sense. Rediscovering the essence of enjoyment. You may have a lot of stuff, but do you really enjoy it? You may have a lot of time, but do you really live in that time? These questions go to one place. Enjoyment. You have to ask yourself, what can you appreciate about your life on a daily basis? What are the things that you really look forward to? If you're completely honest with yourself, you should be able to find at least one or two items and that's good enough. Unfortunately, a lot of people can't even get that far. A lot of them are so confused that they can't even name one. Think back to what you'd look forward to day after day. What can you appreciate daily? Another way to answer this question is to focus on loss. As the old saying goes, you only miss the water when the well is dry. Day after day, you go to the well to get water. In fact, it's so routine and you've done it so many times that you don't even think about it. Getting water from the well is automatic. Now, can you imagine a bad drought and that water runs out? Prior to it running out, you start becoming aware of how important it is. Before you know it, the water is gone. You remember its importance. Think about certain challenging times in your life where you lose stuff, people, or you are unable to engage in activities that you normally do. What can this tell you about what's important to you? 
what should be important to you. What does this tell you about things that you should be enjoying? Zero in on the process of enjoyment. When you're enjoying something or the company of people or enjoying an activity, try to break it down into a statement that you can express. I enjoy doing this because it makes me feel alive. I enjoy doing this because it challenges my sense of adventure. Whatever the case may be, list down reasons why you enjoy certain things, certain activities, and why being around certain people feels so good. After you've written down your answers, ask yourself, how can this enjoyment enrich the rest of my life? In other words, if you're able to enjoy yourself in certain contexts, why not take things all the way? Why not find that level of enjoyment in other areas of your life? Whatever you do, do this. I know what I'm about to say is easier said than done. I know that you have all sorts of duties, responsibilities, and obligations that really require your attention, and you're not able to fully enjoy life and be in the moment. I understand that. But regardless of what happens and how you do things, at least try to do this. Try to make great memories. Right now, you may be stressed. You may be struggling with deadlines or other minor fires or emergencies happening in your life. Still, Enjoy what you're doing, because when you take a snapshot of what's going on in your life, eventually, some of it would make it to your memory banks. I know it sounds like a cliche, but life is actually much shorter than you care to realize. I know right now you're probably struggling to keep your head above water in certain aspects of your life, but try to take mental snapshots of where you are. Try to zero in on those points of enjoyment. Believe it or not, you will reach a point in your life where you look fondly back to them. Eventually, at a certain point in your life, you will realize the power of memories. Unlocking the power of memories. Usually, when people think about memories, they often view it in utilitarian terms. You remember stuff because it enables you to do certain things in the future. You remember how to do things. You remember people's faces. You remember certain dates. It's supposed to lead to some sort of practical advantage. However, it's also powerful in terms of your sense of meaning and contentment. When you learn how to unlock the power of memories, you will be able to willfully remember things. It's like watching a movie from the past, and as you probably already know, when you see a lot more details in a movie, you will be able to piece it together better. This has a very powerful practical effect on your life. Part of the reason why too many of us are so stressed out, fearful, and depressed is the fact that we really have faulty memories. We fail to see things in context. Surprisingly, we blow things out of proportion. We worry ourselves sick about things that have yet to happen, although we've seen that pattern play out many times before. The problem is memory. If you are able to willfully remember patterns and details from the past, you would feel more in control. Things won't seem as chaotic or as menacing or as unsolvable as they seem right now. When you are able to willfully remember things from the past, your memories can give you the incentive you need to adjust your filter. The reason why we tend to react negatively now is because we have adopted bad filters at some point in the past. Maybe it was innocent or not. Whatever the case may be, we have a bad filter. Unfortunately, we only discover that it's bad when it's too late. A better approach would be to really highlight our ability to remember so our filters become clear. We instantly notice that our filters are not doing us any favors. We naturally become aware that our filters are working against us instead of for us. For this to happen, you have to have the power of remembrance. You have to have clear memories. Finally, if you were to put a lot of time and focus in remembering your past more effectively, this can lead to conscious filtering. I hope this much is clear. All the processes that I've described up to this stage in the training point to the conclusion that we were active editors of our reality. You have to understand that the stimuli the world is sending to you is neutral. It is you who gives them meaning. We can do this passively or consciously and actively. Regardless, it's going to happen. Unfortunately, a lot of the frustrations people have about their lives is due to the fact that they're simply not conscious of their personal filtering process. They just let it hit them. They think that this is the truth because this is how their mind normally works. It doesn't have to lead to that conclusion. You can consciously filter the stimuli that's coming in. You can change what you focus on, and of these stimuli, you can change how you interpret them. Finally, you can change what you choose to remember and how this relates to your personal narrative. That's how powerful your mind is. 
Unfortunately, you won't benefit from this if you fail to be conscious about it and you fail to take control of it. When you keep exercising your power of memory generation and recall, eventually, you start filtering your reality in a very conscious way. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.